Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Grand Tactician The Civil War, the Whiskey and Lemons DLC, uh, which is the first DLC out for Grand Tactician The Civil War. This is a DLC that puts you in charge of an individual general in the war. You're no longer commanding everything, but you're now commanding effectively what just one individual, initially a low-ranking individual within sort of the, the high commands uh, overarching command system. I would command. In this battle we've been fighting, we've been commanding an individual brigade. We don't actually have a brigade command to our name. We're a regimental commander. We've been promoted to colonel, but we did take over a brigade using our prestige and sort of influence over the general, uh, and so we have taken control of this brigade. In the initial day's fight, we caught an enemy brigade, isolated, and routed it, uh, and then in the second day's fight, we are in the middle of we moved our forces up to the enemy position, hit them from one flank. The AI is hitting them from another flank. And so things seem to be going reasonably well. The problem is that we're running low on ammunition and that the enemy has twice, or not twice, but they've got 10,000 more men than us. We've got about, let's say like 14,000. They've got like 24 or something like that. Um, it might be 20 and 30. I, I need to double check, but they have a considerably larger force than we do. And so while we've been attacking and inflicting losses at a greater pace than the enemy, I don't think we've been doing it at a great enough pace. Furthermore, I believe they have considerable reserves, which are not yet using up their ammunition, while our forces are beginning to deplete their ammunition, which will make attacking much more difficult. Even in the night phase, in theory, you're supposed to get reinforced with ammo. I haven't seen yet that, that yet in the DLC, even in the base game for the, the strategic version. It's usually like half a complement or a third of a complement of ammo. So it doesn't usually ever get you back to the, the initial sort of state of readiness for fighting. With that being said, guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump back into this episode. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Please leave your thoughts down below. And without further ado, let's see how this battle plays out. Are they not getting shot at by anyone? Like, why is the 13th New York only lost 28 men? Also, the casualties from the second Wisconsin seem to have stopped. I don't know if, like, the real line of sight there. It says we're firing, but I think it's only a small percentage of the regiment that actually is shooting. I wonder if the enemy doesn't have a line of sight on me. If they can't see the second New York because of the cornfield or something. You'd think they'd at least shoot into it, but it doesn't seem like they're taking any casualties here. Which I will not complain about. I will let us just fire away as much as we can. Got more AI regiments coming up, about another three or four. Can you rally Marylanders? So I don't know where my other regiment's routed to. Where did the artillery we're commanding move to? Are they firing on anyone? Deploying that roadway. Maybe there's someone you can shoot at. Looks like you burned through all your ammo, though. Trying to rally the two regiments which routed and get get them back into the fight possibly. Eighteenth New York are gonna be freaking heroes after this battle. We did the sneaky sneaky. The enemy didn't see us for most of the fight. We just kept pouring it into the cavalry here. Maybe the, actually, the, what's probably happening is the unit they're engaged with here, the 2nd Texas Cavalry, probably has very, very bad cavalry weapons, like, maybe they're like muskets and sabers, and they don't have, uh, musketoons and sabers or something like that, and they don't have the range to engage them. 
That is a, a very likely reason why they may not be fighting or taking losses. And I'm all for it. I'm just going to let them keep picking off that regiment. Maybe we'll get another enemy unit routed. They've already lost almost half their men. Two regiments moving in front of the Wisconsin. I don't really want to move the Wisconsin forward with, with low ammo. So I will keep them in their position here where they occasionally lose a volley and occasionally inflict some casualties. They're not losing too badly right now themselves. Meanwhile, 13th New York is low on ammo. Six rounds left. So. Right, and the other regiments come up yet. What's their stable? One percent. Bring them forward, boys. You guys lost a hundred men. Almost a quarter of your force. Boys are no longer broken. They don't have much in left. So, so we'll bring our two routed regiments up. Maybe we can get them back in the fight. Nice. So the second Texas is pulling back now. They've lost 350 out of 800 men. Nice if we got another plus 25 for a route inflicted. Where they're being flanked from. It still hit him from here, though. Just barely. Artillery fire. Alright, our boys are up and firing. Down the roadway. We didn't actually route the second Texas. They lost almost 50% casualties. But they did not route. Impressive. There's a detachment of skirmishers up here along this fence line that's going to fire into the enemy flank by the looks of it. I don't know why they're advancing quite that aggressively. It seems like maybe fair number of the rebel units don't have rifles and so we're able to engage at a slightly longer range than them because we got a lot of boys on the firing line here i don't see a lot of smoke coming back we were up to th almost 400 prestige gain from casualties inflicted by our brigade over 50 for the route, 30 for objectives. We did lose 20 for routes of our own troops. But that well exceeds the 150 or so that we spent on acquiring the regiment. Also possible the AI is ordered to only engage at long range, or sorry, short range. Seventy ninth New York is up. Main regiment is also coming forward here. They only still lost about a thousand men more than us, seven percent more of their force. But for the moment their morale is, is long is larger than ours. Maybe you can move your arty end of this wall. Less cavalry. Like, come on, guys. Do more. I know everybody's out of ammo, but so am I. Oh, 
Oh, by the way, I don't know. I was saying that the New Yorkers have muskets. They've got rifled muskets. It's the Marylanders who have muskets. Main. The main boys don't have muskets. What the hell I'm saying? The main boys are back in action. Wisconsin boys are going to push forward. Where are you guys going? Oh, I told you to do that, didn't I? I had the wrong unit clicked. Okay. Second Wisconsin is low on ammo, but still only a yellow low on ammo icon. Not a red. 26 Mississippi is engaged by two of our regiments here on the flank. 79th New York is trying to get in on those uh, sweet, sweet concrete walls. It looks like the 123rd New York came up and support with the second Rhode Island, and the enemy left flank here may be breaking. So we may be pushing them off the line here a bit. Only we have enough ammo to aggressively push forward. I'm taking a risk and I'm moving the 13th New York out of their covered position here. Man. Quinby should be uh, should be real happy I took over command of this brigade. It's, it's going to be one of the more effective brigade commanders in terms of the results so far. Even if we were to lose this right now. We must have an elevation thing because usually you don't fire straight through your lines, I don't think. Wisconsin's like totally what I am on here. So 26 Mississippi is withdrawing. It'd be nice if we could just like flat out rob them. All right, boys, we're pushing them back. We're pushing them back onto the objective. Keep pushing, keep moving forward gonna try and squeeze him a bit. Hopefully the casualties are getting to him. I mean, they've lost about a thousand men more than us. It's about six percent more of their force. That ain't nothing. The pressure should add up. you to advance up to this fence line. Use that for cover. This guy's in the river. Second so Texas. Drive them to the river. Oh shit. Troops in front of us got pushed back. 109th New York. I may be getting a little over aggressive here. Shot them. Okay, guys, stop. Stop moving quite as aggressively as that. Maybe don't advance. Because while you are inflicting losses on the Mississippi boys, I, I don't I don't want you going up there like that. Not, not quite. You're going to route in a sec.
don't feel like I can pull these guys back. They're probably about to route, but it's important that they keep doing what they're doing while they can, because that position is important to keep this enemy in a tenuous spot. They are routing. <laughs> the 11th main, I feel bad for them. They've lost a lot of bullets. Nice little volley there from the 79th New York. Why are you guys not moving? Wisconsin with their lack of ammo is going to kind of become the flank of the advance. Try and keep the enemy out of position here. Nice. Another enemy in South Carolina just retreating. Brigade, 750 casualties, 2nd Texas, 400. I don't know what, what ammo you're firing still, but keep shooting. It says you're firing. still have some fresh troops up here. I'm not sure we've really defeated them all. Still has us in a minor defeat. They still have a morale. Oh, no, their morale is no longer an advantage. It's mostly because they've held the objective so long. Confederacy casualties are over 20%. It's saying they've suffered severe casualties. Further casualties may break them quickly. So that may explain why they are starting to give ground. It's been a long battle. I don't know that I'd call it a Pyrrhic victory, but it certainly hasn't been a bloodless victory for anybody except for maybe the 13th New York here. 28 casualties and they've fired off all their ammo. Second Wisconsin to this point has not lost too badly. 79 men out of 700. That's about 10%. Comparatively, that's not bad. Mississippi cavalry units routed. Second South Carolina hasn't lost too bad to this point, but they are not in a in a good spot either. Our morale is going up on a lot of these troops. You can see a lot of our boys are now confident. rushing south to face us because weird Quinby's lost a quarter of his brigade almost more than a fifth less than a quarter Pushing up very clumped up along this roadway. Not necessarily the...
preferred choice. I wish they had didn't leave some of that artillery back. And now their morale is confident, eh? I'll come up here and take that battery of artillery then. enemy formation they're all clumped up in like individual lines so are we a little bit problem now is ammo not enough the reds seem to have plenty what do the casualties look like now 3500 to 2400, so still only about a thousand advantage. Morale is nearly even. A little frustrating. Wisconsin as a target. I just saw they took another, another casualty. Sergeant Private Jones Wallace from Eau Claire, Wisconsin. is a casualty. I, I don't know. Right, 13th New York is now engaged in a battle where someone's shooting back. Their casualties are starting to go up and they don't have a lot of ammo. Wisconsin boys, you want to help them? Presumably that means they're not, uh, oh no, they just stood up to volley, so lay down, reload, I would assume that would slow their loading speed down, though probably not less than units that are extremely low on ammo. Meanwhile, the advance in the center here is kind of clogged up on this, this center line, and the enemy is, well, they're getting real close to regaining the morale advantage. Ten more men. Hang in there, boys. Fighting against an enemy that's lost considerably more than you, although they still have more muskets than you. Rickers, get up there. So the ninth New York's lost a lot men now, too. Momentum here. Get up in there. Go support your boys. Second Wisconsin, I think, are all targeting the 26 Mississippi. A 
11th. Main just helped route that artillery battery. Good job, boys. Oh my god. What a fight. What a fight. I'd love to melee with some of these reps, but I think they, uh, I feel bad for the 11th main. This regiment is not, they've not had a fair fight here. They've lost over a third of their, their men. Morale is now back in the Confederacy's favor, 28 to 44. Both sides have suffered severe losses. Other casualties can easily break one faction. Hell of a second day's battle. Oh, by the way, also apparently it's 93 degrees and stormy. <laughs> okay. Now running into fresh rebel troops. It looks like a lot of these units have not bled too badly. Some of them must not have been deployed all that aggressively earlier. Rebel regiments, by and large, seem to be much larger than our own. Also, I think ammunition inflicts how many casualties you inflict, too, in a volley. It could be wrong, but it seems to be a much reduced rate of fire and possibly also damage inflicted. Getting to nightfall on this battle today. But we're not going to have any ammo in the next day if the resupply in the previous fight's been any indication. The enemy's actually got a better casualty ratio right now. They're closing. We're over a thousand before another under a thousand. What is losing men? Uh, Coke, I don't. 11th mate. This guy's in the back. I'll hang in there, Cook. Do your damage. Do your worst. Figure out. First mass. You've lost two men in this battle. How's that even possible? another hour of battle till nightfall. Honestly, if I was the army commander, I'd say this is not going in our favor. We should just withdraw. Eleventh vein routed again. Four seventy one. Remember, we paid one sixty for the brigade, so three. Not quite four hundred prestige gained in this fight. I 
sure who you're shooting at. I guess these guys. At least it's miss. Some of these rebel units were engaging now. They're taking a few casualties. It's possible the 28th South Carolina has muskets and these guys don't. 26 miss. Seventy ninth New York also probably gonna cease effectively being a regiment. They had a glorious battle. 13th in New York especially, but a lot of these guys are getting combat ineffective. I'd be sending them home to re rest and recuperate, but it's just the very beginning. Well, I guess it's mid-June, but it's still early in the campaigning season. I wonder if this Wisconsin regiment has a Wisconsin flag, because that's our unit. I don't see any of the other ones having state flags. It's almost 1900 hours. Armies will redeploy overnight. We'll see if we fight another three day battle. I've never seen long battles like this in, in, my, in all my playtime until now. So, interesting. Still about 900 advantage in casualties inflicted. Wisconsin Regiment, if it only had had ammo, would, would be an effective force right now. Over 600 muskets still on the line. Is our artillery still firing back there? Probably no sense in moving them up at this point, but... just give a full complement of ammo to the Wisconsin boys. I could do a lot with them. Who's that regiment? Second Ohio just marched straight up to the front of the 28th South Carolina, fired a volley in at like point blank range. Nineteen hundred hours, give me night or give me the Prussians, eh? Push forward again. Better morale is going up, which is a concern. Even so, we're still trying to push in on them. These guys are also out of ammo, pretty much. guys are rested I would charge like but all my boys are so tired I don't think they've got a chance at breaking an enemy line let's try it well, the 
Wisconsin boys are barely moving. 79th is gonna die. They're outnumbered by like two to one in there, I think. I don't know if ammo matters in melee. Fatigue definitely does, I know that. Come on, boys. Break their line. Whoa, 18 casualties inflicted. We rounded them. Oh, this here. 70.5. Holy crap. We lost a ton of men there. And that by itself just pushed the casualties back closer to a thousand now. Of course, now we're stuck in this position where we're going to be exposed to a lot of enemy units' fire. I'm going to order you to retreat, Wisconsin boys, before you get shot to pieces. So for you, Illinois, er, I don't know if I can't issue your orders to retreat. All right, so they shattered the 20th South Carolina. Thank you, 2nd Ohio, for moving out in front of me and probably saving some men's lives in my regiments. get credit for that charge. That was a, a fierce thing. Enemy morale is still above ours. Thirteen New York is actually not too tired. That would be interesting to see if they could melee well. But there's no one, like, I don't know that charging him into an enemy that's twice their size is terribly wise. Let's give it a shot, though. Let's see what happens. I gotta imagine the enemy is as tired as they are. We're close. Nope, they routed real fast. That was not a good result. End of day, troops resupplied. Are they though? Let's see, 13th New York, no, everybody's still low. What's the point in saying you're resupplying anything when you've got no ammo? What about the unit that routed further? Did the artillery get any more ammo? They're way back low. Is the army supply situation that bad or is just the resupply between days that bad? Uh, all right. The enemy's now pulling back into very good terrain, too. Honestly, just... There's no point in continuing to push forward. We're not going to win. The enemy has ammo, and most of our units do not. 
Although some bastards definitely still have some, because they didn't fight at all. The army is going to retreat soon, though. The morale is very low. So we'll just accelerate this, because we ain't going to win. Defeat! Just give the order. Oh, a second Wisconsin you should retreat to. Everybody's running for their lives. We lost the battle yeah, that we just spent two hours fighting. Damn it. Okay, so that battle actually, casualties wise, was better than you would have thought. The Federals did lose 34 of its, their 36 guns. The Rebs lost 10 of their 15. They lost 152 of their 319 cavalry. The Rebs lost 550 of their 1800. 2900 of their 12,000 infantry. The Rebs lost 4100. So the Rebs lost almost 5,000 men. The Federals lost just shy of 4,000 men. And the Rebs only had about 700 more men. So the Rebs actually lost a, a larger number of men and a greater percentage of their force. Uh, nonetheless, we were unable to take the objectives and the morale of our army failed. And uh, that's it for the Battle of Hanover Junction. Not a good result. Um, at least in the sense that the army withdrew. We, our brigade that we took over, uh, inflicted 635 prestige, or we gained 635 prestige, mostly from casualties inflicted. I feel pretty good about our performance in that very long battle played at much slower speeds based on recommendations from the chat. Um, so that seemed to play out reasonably well. But, uh, but yeah, we had a couple of very successful flanking attacks in that battle, but then we got bogged down and sucked into the sort of main advance along the river and, well, you saw what happened. Did we gain any, like, renown in that battle, though? So we gained a lot of prestige. Also, for some reason, we have 8,000 money. I don't know where all that money came from. I don't know if you get a bunch when you get promoted. Anyway, so we are a colonel. I don't know if I can... I can't do any of this other stuff till I command a brigade still, even though I got promoted. So, anyway, Grudge, you've a fair, had a fair share of disagreements with your superior officer, Colonel Quinby, lately. He has made it very clear that he is not happy with you, and his official reports it has been very dismissive toward your performance, which is hurting your prestige. What? I played very well in that battle, thank you very much, Quinby. I know I took over your command, but uh, I should, I should, so maybe that's why I gained absolutely no fame. He, uh, Dismissed my uh, performance in his report to, to the war department, perhaps. Bastard. That's really unfortunate, too, because if we go and we look at the first division, we look. Oh, notion, we're still in a battle. We got to get out of it first. Are we really still in the battle? Yeah, it still says we are. Meanwhile, there's also a battle for Richmond going on. Victory at Richmond, at least. So the northern flank was hit hard. First division. But uh, the troops in, in Richmond held. And so we have... We fought another battle, the second Wisconsin. I don't know why it says my uh, administration's this when we looked at our personal administration. That's a much higher score. In any event, we inflicted 100 or 283 casualties ourselves, suffering only 134. The 13th New York inflicted 178, lost 99. The 79th New York inflicted 301, losing 185. 
the 11th main inflicted oh shit they had their contracts expire the day after the battle or the day of the battle 71 men left 325 yeah, re-enlisted but um they are after the battle they suffered 334 casualties inflicting 258 so quinby not very happy with me for whatever jerky reason the artillery meanwhile inflicted 170 casualties so he gained probably a bit of fame and prestige Anyway, so second Wisconsin, your boys or my boys, 565 men left. I probably didn't gain any real progress toward uh, promotion either. We're at 4%, I think is what that said. Yeah. We could spend, though we have 3,100 prestige. We could spend 2,100 and get promoted to a division to Brigadier General right off the bat. If we become a brigadier, I think we are required because of how the game mechanics work to command a brigade. I don't think you can be a brigadier in command of a regiment. As a colonel, we could command a brigade. So, Quinby hates us. We could spend 415 prestige to take his command from him, which would be freaking hilarious. Listen to your advices, 100%. Dislike. Well, sir... Maybe we should take your brigade from you. The only problem with taking his brigade is after that last battle, it is pretty shot up. 322 left, 405, 280. I would be tempted to send the entire brigade. Except, I mean, the only the Wisconsin sold 560, but I'd be tempted to send the entire brigade home to, to recruit. Which I don't know if that would make me popular with Shank. Shank likes me, by the way. I've got a good relation with him. Or maybe not. It's 17%. But it's an it's an upward arrow as opposed to a downward arrow. I wonder if just anything above 0% is, is a positive. I'm not sure. What's my relationship with McDowell? Does he even know who I am? It's basically indifferent. But given we already have a grudge with Quinby, perhaps we should take his brigade. We get to keep the regiment that we've been fighting with, the 2nd Wisconsin. Maybe we could merge the uh, 79th and the 13th. I don't know if it lets you do that, but I'd be tempted to merge those two into one. And then just instantly have a 700-man regiment and a 500 and, or basically a 600-man regiment. And then we could send the 11th Maine back to recruit new new troops. So we'd have a two regiment brigade basically for a short period of time plus a battery of artillery. I'm really tempted to do that. 415. It's not the cheapest brigade, but I'll make another enemy if I take someone else's unit. We could also try and take Shank's division from him, but that would consume almost all of my prestige. So, something to consider. I don't think we're going to make that decision today, but maybe in our next episode. Meanwhile, we can... We still can't do another. We've got a... We're still limited. We haven't gotten more... Maybe the actions indicator is not by rank, but by... Um, position I could spend 250 prestige to reconcile with uh, my brigadier as well oh I don't have 8,000 money by the way I have 800 that makes a lot more sense okay well anyway guys I think that's going to do it for today's episode hope you guys did enjoy that uh, rather long battle and uh, it was interesting especially the early part of the battle it got a little bit of a slog toward the end but let me know if you want to see more of this campaign. We continue to chug along, and I think we'll take a brigade next episode. Uh, I'm just not sure who. But, uh, yeah, thanks again for tuning in, guys. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.